talking to the creator of Nino Bunny. Um, please tell us about it. What inspired this? Let's see. Uh, well, I'm a kid from I'm a kid of the '90s. I grew yes. up actually watching Saturday morning cartoons. Help, same. <laughs> I, I actually I was actually born in Tijuana, Mexico. And yes. I moved to San Diego when I was in third grade, but I learned yes. to speak fluent English. It's like, amazing. Watching like Care Bears and Gummy Bears and Ducktales. Hell yeah. And when I was yes. younger, my family in Mexico actually sent me to a therapist because they thought they thought I was speaking in tongues. <laughs> I, was like, I know how to speak English, and they're like, "Where?" Like, it wasn't until like I had cousins that came from San Francisco. They're like, "Who taught the kid English?" Oh, and I'm like, "I've been telling you this the whole time." <laughs> so like, with me, it's always been all my work has been representative of things that I grew up with, uh, and then things that inspire me along the way. Whether it be like traditional American cartooning, you know, Japanese animation, yes. anime, uh, from graffiti, street art, pop art, pop surrealism, all the things that I've just enjoyed in my life just kind of became a mixture of what I do today. So it's like, I call it a cluster pop of things. <laughs> you know, a mixture of everything that made me. It's like, I, I'm i a huge advocate for mental health awareness. I'm actually yes. on the board of directors for the National Alliance for Mental Illness. Amazing. And I speak about mental health in my art. Uh, it used to be very dark, very emo, but I was still addressing the, the, the aspect of mental health before, yes. even before, like way before even COVID. So before COVID hit, I'm like, yeah. after COVID, it's gonna be, everybody's gonna be speaking about mental health. It's such an important message to destigmatize it. Yes. And just bring awareness, to just make it comfortable for people to talk about it. During everything that was going on with the pandemic and there was all these riots, all these things, I yeah. still focused on mental health, but I started wanting to give a positive message. And I started creating artwork that not only speaking about mental health, but self-love, self-care, yes. like respect, empathy, kindness towards others. The lessons that we were taught as little kids by shows like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street oh, hell yeah. is something that makes the pillars of what a human being is. Yes. So growing up, because of life, stress, all these things, people tend to forget that. What I would try to do with my art is just to bring you back to that childlike mentality that you once had to at least see a stranger not as like a stranger but as like a possible friend like you did when we were kids in the playground. Yes! Having kindness and empathy towards oneself and towards each other and realizing that it's perfectly okay not to be always be perfect. Being able to bring that message in such a strong way, I don't care how cheesy or how crazy it might seem. Oh, it's pretty awesome. A person like Mr. Rogers brought us such a great message and nobody's been able to pick up that torch. And I've been saying it for such a long time and I thought, yeah. I'm such a broken person. I can't be the one to carry that torch, but the more I, I look, like doing this artwork, the more I meditate, the more I just met people, I realized that everybody is supposed to take that step up challenge and become the best kind of person that you can be. Mr. Rogers' wife was once told, how hard is it to be married to a saint? She said, I hate that word. Because if you use the word saint, it's almost something that's unachievable. Yeah. He's a human being like everybody else. He gets angry, he gets upset, he just does, has healthy ways of managing it. And it's something that I just want to be able to work on and express. Like, you know, what's wrong with being just kind and nicer to each other? And everything that I do is just to bring back that moment of pure happiness that we once had a kid, whether it be like a certain snack or a cartoon or a, a smell or a sound. Yes! It takes you back to that moment where everything was just good. I'm not saying we should be like that every day, but at least take some time to let that inner child out and experience just that joy and happiness, not be afraid of you know what society makes you want to think. Like, you know, don't be silly today, don't dance, don't ask that girl out, don't do some that because you're not good enough. You know, right. you don't want to go the rest of your life regretting the decisions you didn't make. So I'm saying, you know what, if, if you're supposed to learn from those mistakes, if you make mistakes, and at the same time be able to opened up at least for a little bit like we were when we were children we were children because we weren't that scared of almost anything so if i could just bring back with a t-shirt a sticker just that smile for five minutes i don't want a pause button for the world i just want a slow-mo button for the world for <laughs> so that's the art that i'm trying to promote with everything that i do this is brilliant thank you for your expertise thank you're on you the so board of with the board of what i'm so sorry go again <laughs> what with the board of mental health you yeah. said that's amazing yeah it was because like i with my art, I'm so open. I open up about 110% on social media everywhere about my feelings and my emotions. It's and it hopes that it's others, when because I get a lot of messages of people reaching out saying that I've helped them in a way. So my thought is like, if I get somebody to open one or two percent to like a friend or a family member, yeah. by them seeing that I open up 110%, especially like, men, then it, at least it helps a little bit. Yes. You know? And also letting people know that sometimes when things happen in life that are like sad or completely tragic, yeah. it's okay to go through the feelings instead of ignoring them and trying to push them aside because you're never going to get rid of them until you actually let those feelings through. 
if you have to cry it out, if you have to scream it out, curse the world, and whatever you want to do, let it out. Because the worst thing you can do is keep it inside, keep it buried, having it build to the point where it just becomes, you know, a, a mental breakdown, a heart attack, anything. You know, and then allowing yourself to realize that it's okay to hurt, it's okay to cry. It is perfectly normal and nobody should hold it against you. You know, and it's and that's what the world kind of just needs a little bit more empathy from each other. Yes. Because otherwise, what's the point? What's the point of going to work every day just to pay your bills, just to do stage, just to survive? You're living because you have to enjoy the little minutia things in life. Yes. And if you can't have the giant things, be thankful for the tiny things that you have today. And being able to, to allow ourselves to get past what we think we need to have in our lives to make it better, right. realizing that we already have that now, and we just gotta appreciate the things that we do have. As little as they might seem, they build up to something big. A lot of these designs are done on, on uh, what would look like a Polaroid, right? a Polaroid yeah. picture. The right. reason, it's a lot of, it's, I call that the self-love series, and it's because there's the little moments that are captured in time, like they are in a Polaroid. So if, yeah. Put them together side by side, all the Polaroids of throughout your life. That's your story of your life. And it also can tell you that because it's such a brief thing, nothing lasts forever, which is the greatest and the saddest thing as well, because no bad thing will last forever. No great thing will last forever. Absolutely. But if you flip it, no bad thing will also last forever. Yes, brilliant. You know, so you have to be thankful for today and just be moving forward and just try to be a, a little bit to just be kind as a stranger because it becomes a ripple effect to have, just create even a, love, a little bit of a better, more loving kind of like society. The bunny you're, is he all, is your alter ego. Yeah, so the bunny was actually created because I was the youngest child of my family. Uh, I had my siblings uh, that were older than me. Of course, they didn't want to play with the little brother. Oh, come on! And my, when my mom was uh, eight and a half, almost nine months pregnant, I accidentally kicked her in the stomach. I was trying to play with her and she wouldn't want to play with me, so I kind of got mad and I was three years old. I kicked her in the stomach she was nine months pregnant. She came back with a mason jar <gasps> and a fetus inside of it. And they told me... I'm told so her, I sorry. Like, what is that? And she was like, that's your little brother, Felipe. And I said, what happened? And she gave me all these explanations that I didn't understand. I'm so sorry. And then she ended it with, you kicked me so you killed your brother. So she said that to me. Sorry. And that really messes you up as a kid. And yeah. And you grew up believing that. I can't even imagine. Um, he became almost like my imaginary friend, guardian angel. He's the one that I spoke to when nobody would play with me. All my feelings, all my emotions came from him. So years and years later, when I started working on my art career and becoming more like doing more art shows, I, I had an artist tell me, you know what, I, go, I love your, your art, but I don't remember anything. So maybe try to do one show, you create one character and make it personal. Oh, I didn't think yes. anybody would care, but I'm like, all right, I like drawing bunnies. So I created this bunny suited character with a mask that has two holes for eyes. And I expressed my feelings and my emotions through that character. And because I did, that show actually sold out. And then I did a, my other show, and that was in my hometown in Vegas. And then I came to uh, LA and I did a show in this gallery called Luthen Zoo's amazing uh, gallery. It's like the mecca for like lowbrow art in the world. And I did my first show there. We sold out. So amazing. Uh, eventually people were like, what's the name of the bunny? And it was MySpace days and I remember entering a contest <laughs> on MySpace. I'm like, if you name the bunny, you get a painting. And I didn't like any of the names and I realized one day, every time that I went through anything, I spoke through to my little brother, Felipe. So why don't we just name it Felipe? Also, it'd be kind of cool to one day, if I ever make it famous, to see Felipe across the box in stores like Hot Topic. Fast forward to now, Hot Topic sells my toy in their stores and it says Felipe right across the box. So being able to see that in stores to me, I'm just like, wow. And that was like the first goal that I wanted to achieve and now it's more of like, I want to be able to help people. It's not about the brand, it's not about holding up, it's not about the money, it's more about I can tell. getting that message out. Yes. Of, you know, because even if I, like, this, like, I've done 36 years of being miserable and living a certain way, I'm like, let's try this. You know, kindness, love, just go all out. If Even if you're wrong, what's going to happen? You live the life being kind to people. It's so powerful. You know? So, I can't really go wrong in that direction, and... Once I started focusing on that, everything just else just kind of clicked into place. Right now we're in the process of, the, of relaunching the brand with this new message, new characters, and just moving forward to do from children's books, we're hoping to do TV shows, and just going in that direction. This is so amazing. Thank you. This is you, so many years of pain that you had to endure to bring this to life. So much agony, so much anguish. 
and you have learned from it and you have taken it and you've constructed it, reconstructed it to something that can build other people up and make other people's lives better. And it's it's amazing. I wish everyone would follow your example. You know, it's like in the world is actually, in general, people are pretty good. You know, I understand that a lot of people fight and a lot of people get ready and argue, but I understand that also it comes from uh, fear, frustration, and, and you know, we don't know what's going on in the world. You know, everything changes so fast, so I understand people being upset or being angry, whatever side of like the fence you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, at the same time, you know, having empathy for those that don't disagree with you. Yes. Only that way we could actually bring like things, us together. You could start teaching lessons. Like a lot of people post stuff on social media and they want to teach a positive message. But if it doesn't come from an open heart, from a place of kindness, but it, it's a lesson of like, you have to do this because of this, <laughs> nobody's going to listen to that. Nobody's going to accept it because you're forcing it on them. But if you're trying to teach something or share something, make sure that it comes from not a clenched fist. Yes. And that way, it be, it's a lot easier to accept yes. instead of like being forced to accept it. You know, because in general, if you tell somebody you have to do it, they really don't want to. Yeah, exactly. It isn't until they want to do it for themselves. They have to and want to be better. Like seeing like one person like myself or somebody else just being kind of, like again, it could be that butterfly effect that, you know, it could reach so many people from one moment in time. So I'm like, if I could create a moment for somebody else, then that's all I really want to do. Please know how powerful you are. Just how much light you bring into the world. That's just what I want. protect yourself. I've been in such a dark place that I don't want other people to be. That's another thing that I'm completely grateful for. Like I, with my little brother or my niece that passed away a couple years ago for cancer. I'm so they, sorry. They teach you that maybe we shouldn't wait to that moment when we're in our deathbed to be thankful for the things that we have. Yes. Because those little things are the things that they're most grateful for in those moments when they know they're at their last. So maybe we should start living a little bit more like that today yes. instead of later when it's too late to like really enjoy it. Really appreciate the constructs and stop paying so much attention to the facade. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much.